Hello dear students and my audience, very warm welcome to Dr. Zia Ahmed YouTube channel. Today in this uh, video we are going to discuss the poem, The Country at My Shoulders by Maniza Alvi. This poem is included in uh, many of the university syllabi. So it would be helpful for the students to write down its critical appreciation and to understand what this poem is about. So the poem is The Country at My Shoulders. The Country at My Shoulder. Uh, this is written by Maniza Albi, so therefore we must have some view about Maniza Albi. She's a Pakistani poet by birth, although she lives abroad. Uh, she was a child when she migrated with her parents towards uh, England, uh, but she has roots in Pakistan and most of her poetry is in the search of these roots. In a way, she is most of the time trying to reroute herself through Pakistan. And that is why her poetry is called Pakistani Anglophone Poetry. I mean the poetry which is written in English by some Pakistani. And as a result, it becomes post-colonial literature as well because it goes to reflect Pakistani idiom, Pakistani culture, and the kind of resistance or uh, there are other things which are maintained by the poet with respect to the cultural and linguistic and uh, scenes of Pakistan in order to indicate that it comes from Pakistan, written by a Pakistani, yet in English language. So therefore, this poem is about love for Pakistan, migration and its troubles and the settlements. It's about the culture of Pakistan. It's about the aunts and uncles from Pakistan as well. So let's enter into the poem and see what further this poem has for us. Uh, uh, poem is in continuous lines, but I have made certain sections so that we can understand it easily. So the poem begins here. Uh, there's a country at my shoulder, growing larger soon. It will burst, rivers will spill out, run down my chest. My cousin Azam wants visitors to play Ludo with him all the time. He learns English in a class of 70. So the lines, the very first line is the repetitive line of the title. That is a country at my shoulder. I mean that she's carrying a burden, the burden of uh, the relationship or the concern or the attachment of Pakistan of, because of different scenes. And she says that this burden is not stopping, it's increasing with the passage of time. She says it's increasing so much that ultimately it will burst out and she will be able to uh, write down some of the things about it. So because of her attachment with Pakistan, because of her relationship with Pakistan, it is the culture and the roots of Pakistan which continue to remind her and she says that she will be expressing these things in her poetry very soon. She gives one example by saying that her cousin Azam is there who is all the time uh, playing Ludo, wasting his time and uh, is enjoying, although he is uh, learning English language also among the class of the 70 people. So in this way, she gives reference to most of the young people in Pakistan who have lots of time, although they, are, they have some duties like here, the duty of Azam is to learn English language and the huge and heavy class is also being indicated here. Most of the institutions have such classes in Pakistan and he's engaging himself in playing of the Ludo. That is the type of Pakistani style that is being indicated here. So the very first line goes to talk about, the very first six lines actually we should say, talk about the Pakistani people, Pakistani style and Pakistani ways of living life that has been indicated as the title goes to suggest there is a country at my shoulders. Same as the case with the, the next uh, six lines which present socio-political image before us. For example, the poet says, and I must attend, I must stand to attention with the country at my shoulder. There is an execution in the square. The women's dupattas are wet with tears. The offices have closed for the white hot afternoon. One of the important uh, style of the poet is that every line is connected with the next one. And here we also see one image of uh, a person who is going to be executed on the road and that is also one of the characteristics of the martial law era and the 1970s, in the 1980s rather, and the 1990s as well, where the people were punished very heavily. And the person who is executed, his women are feeling very sad and tragic, and that's why tears are there. But the offices at this moment are referred to be closed because of the white hot afternoon. So not only socio-political situation is being pointed out, but also the environmental situation that Pakistan is a hot country and because of that, it is most of the time uh, the offices are closed because of this in the afternoon when the hot season is there. So not only socio-political image is created here in these lines, but also the environment is pointed out. This environment will continue in the next uh, six lines as well. But the reader must be aware that we cannot find any rhyming scheme 
in any of the lines, all lines are different from each other. Some end in hyphens and some end in full stops and some end in commas, but there's no uniformity or harmony of this type of techniques as well. So the only thing that is to be focused upon is the message of the poem, that the poem is related to Pakistan, the socio-political culture of Pakistan and the people of Pakistan. That is why the title of the poem is The Country on My Shoulders. And same as the case would be here in the next lines, here the women of Pakistan being talked about by saying, but the women stone breakers chip away at boulders, dirt on their bright hems, they wait the men and the trucks. I try to shake the dust from the country, smooth it with my hands, I watch Indian films. So here in these lines, the women who beat the stone on the roads in order to construct the roads, they labor very hard, and as a result of that, their, their clothes, which are having bright hems, these are these are dirtied because of the dust which arises out of that. They are waiting for their men and trucks to come, and then they can finish their work and go. And in this way, the condition of the women in Pakistan, the laboring women on Pakistan, is referred out. And same, uh, see, the poet says is the case with her also that she's having a different type of dust on her clothes, and she wants to remove it. She doesn't want to remember it. And for this purpose, she wants to watch the movies from the from Indian side, that is the neighboring country of Pakistan. She wants to watch these movies, perhaps in order to get rid of such feelings which are arising because of the situation of women in Pakistan. So the image of women in Pakistan has been pointed out by the poet in these lines. Same as the condition here, that we don't have any rhyming schemes. And there are very little consonants and assonances available. So whatever are available are very few. So the style of the poem is very less important. More is important the message which the poem is sending towards the readers. Next lines are uh, talking about the stories from Pakistan. For example, it says everyone is very unhappy, everyone is very happy. Now, dancing garlanded through parks. I hear of bribery, family, quarrels, travelers, tales, the stars are so low you think you can't touch them. So uh, here in this poem also we find the condition of the Pakistani people who live in Pakistan, either they are very happy or they are unhappy. So both conditions are at the extreme. No one is moderately happy or moderately unhappy. Some people are extremely happy. It may be about the elite class or about the people who are careless, but also the people who are tragic, who are sad. And sometimes it is seen that the people are dancing, singing in different places and are very happy. They are not only quarreling, bribery is also there. Some travelers and the people who come to visit the poet, they tell their stories from Pakistan, how they have reached there. And in this way, she is touched by these people as well. So in general, the socio situation of the people of Pakistan is also being pointed out in these lines. These lines talk about the uncles. One is Akbar and other is Kamil Ban. Akbar is the person who's very hard worker and drives a truck and his daughter is reading, uh, you know, getting education like she's reading uh, Krishna as the tea, the, the poetess. And then the poet, is, uh, the poet is telling us that this person works very hard in order to provide for the marriage of her daughter. So some of the people in Pakistan were really working hard and trying to provide for their families. But there are other people as well who enjoy their life. For example, Uncle Kamal is there, who is all the time hunting, and he's hunt a tiger, and he's stuffed it and hung its body on the wall of his drawing room. That is also talked about. So in that way, the people who have two types of lives that, that have been pointed out by the poet in this, uh, in this, in this uh, set of lines, the second set of lines will be related to the next one as well. Let's see. And again, the writer links this line with the last one by saying, Fixed in door, I wanted to hide its head in towel. The country has become my body. She says that she saw the tiger who was stuffed and the uh, face of the tiger was in the shape of the rover. She didn't want, she didn't want to see it and she wanted to hide it in the, to in the towel. And for her, the, her own self is the country who is having all these characteristics probably. The poet says, I can't bit, uh, break bits off. The men go home in loose cotton clothes. In the square, there are those who beck. So the condition of the people also, what they wear, what type of culture they have, loose cotton clothes, for example, are also the clothes which are liked in Pakistan. And people go and ultimately everybody is gone from the markets, but uh, there are one type of people who are present there most of the time, and these are the beggars. The beggars are also frequently available in Pakistan. These are being referred in these lines. And similarly, the poet says, and those who beg for mercy, Azam passes the sweet shop, names the sugar monument Taj Mahal. First line is about the last lines, referring to the beggars. The beggars who beg for money also, some of the beggars who beg for mercy also. Mercy from God, mercy from the powerful people, the type of beggaring is there. And in the same way, some sweet shops are also present. Azam is there, who is having the sweet shop. And from those sweet shops, she remembers that there is a sugary monument that is Taj Mahal about the culture of the people, that the people had 
this much money that they could create Taj Mahal in order to remember the sweetness of their love. I watered the country English rain, cover it with English words, soon it will burst or fall like a meteor. According to her, this is the situation that's going on while she's living in London in UK. She is writing about her country in English language and she is using the words of English language in order to express herself and she says that she will be expressing in such a powerful way that it will be falling here and there like a meteor and her poems and poetry will be quite successful. So in this way, the poet ends the poem with a happy note that her poem would be successful everywhere. And now let's discuss what is in the poem. Theme of the poem is rerouting. For example, the poet has got the roots in Pakistan and throughout writing all this poem, the poet discusses how she is linked with Pakistan, Pakistani culture, Pakistani people, and in that way she looks for her roots back into Pakistan, which most of the uh, post colonial writers do in order to relate themselves with the country they belong to. Language of this poem is very simple, it's not that difficult, but it's replete with Pakistani idiom. Ludo, for example, and the names of the people, for example, and many other words have been used which reflect that this is the Pakistan English and Pakistan language, a type of English which is being portrayed. Alliteration of some of the words is possibly there, but not that much. Uh, it's same as the case with assonance, we don't find these things very frequently in the poem. However, the poem, poem has certain punctuation marks also to create a special stress. Sometimes the punctuation mark is a dash, is a kind of hyphen, and then it is comma or full stop. Some lines even don't carry any punctuation at all. There are some consonances as well. For example, drive down cotton clothes. This gives the similar repetitiveness of the sound, so that's why consonance is there. There are no rhyme scheme in it all, and the image is altogether Pakistani culture. Sometimes people playing Ludo, sometimes people receiving punishment, sometimes people begging for mercy, sometimes people working hard for their own sons and daughters, and sometimes people are being executed, and sometimes people are, you know, enjoying, and sometimes people are very sad, and all these things are carried as a burden by the poet, and poet is expressing this burden through this Pakistani post-colonial Anglophone poetry, a piece of poetry, the beautiful monument. So I would suggest to the students, before I close altogether, I would say that the students should consider all these points while they explain this poem or write an assignment on this poem or they are going to write the uh, critical appreciation of the poem, include something about the poetess or her positioning, what type of position she has in Pakistani Anglophone literature and then the people should explain these things line by line, try out the images, the symbols, the language of the poem or if any there is consonance or assonance or any alliteration is present to talk about that. If, it, if there is available some kind of rhyme scheme, the students should talk about that as well. Uh, but the rhyme schemes are missing in some such poems. So this is all about this uh, beautiful poem. And so I hope to see you in some next video. Till that time, enjoy this one. And if you understand it well, do not fail to hit the subscribe or the like button. See you in some next video. Thank you for watching.